So last week I told you guys about a product launched by Mr. Beast, Logan Paul, and KSI called Lunchly, a Lunchables ripoff that features several clones of their long existing flagship products. Only Lunchly has Prime and a Feastables bar in it for children to lose their minds over. Because who doesn't want their kid drinking sugar water and eating chocolate for lunch every single day? Obviously this announcement was met with a lot of criticism, as for one people generally do not like Logan Paul, and Mr. Beast has obviously had his own issues recently as well. Beyond that, Lunchly was essentially being marketed as a healthier alternative to the Lunchable brand, boasting about less calories, less sugar, and more electrolytes. Now I think that's what really rubbed people the wrong way, because at the end of the day, whether it's Lunchly or Lunchables, it's really all processed shit that in my opinion, kids should not be digesting. And a YouTube OG named DanTDM came through to spit some facts, basically saying that this was not a good look for three guys who mainly have children watching their content and buying their already existing products. This tweet went super viral, and all three of the main players responded in their own ways. And KSI's response to this was the most embarrassing, as he made himself look like a massive hypocrite who sees all criticism as hate. And that seems to be a viewpoint that both he and his business partner Logan seem to share. And now he took to his personal YouTube channel to drop a horrible response to the Lunchly drama, titled, Everybody Hates Us Right Now. Lunchly! Ladies and gentlemen, me, Mr. Beast, and Logan Paul have launched Lunchly. Uh, if you've had Lunchables, this is mainly for my American audience. If you had Lunchables. Uh, yeah, I guess they were good at the time. Well, we've made something better. Now, a common theme that you will see throughout this video is KSI is horribly forced to laugh. This dude must think he's the funniest on earth, as he laughs hysterically at every word that comes out of his own mouth. Doing a Reddit video. <laughs> <laughs> It's like he knows a bunch of kids are watching and he wants to give them some sort of built-in laugh track or some shit. Whoa. It reminds me of cringe lord David Dobrik and how he was always doing that forced laughter bit as well. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Like, to me, it doesn't make the video more engaging, it actually makes it look like you have a mental deficiency. This guy is just sitting in his room alone, acting like he's watching Eddie Murphy Raw for the first time. Like, I don't know if this is a laugh of insecurity or what the f*** is going on, but Jesus, it makes it hard to watch. And here is where KSI directly tries to clap back at Dan TDM, and he just kind of makes the same pathetic points that he made on Twitter. So this is what I said. Looks like crap to me while showing his toys that he sold to kids. <laughs> How does this benefit your fans, Dan? <laughs> now, obviously, people didn't realize that I was sh shining a mirror in his face. Instead, they were like, Uh, wait, you did the same as Dan. You made uh, toys with tube heroes. And yes, that's fair, but I'm not the one complaining. <laughs> I mean, while you might think the product is stupid, it does benefit his fans. As did your toy line you did with this very same company. Because they get to hopefully enjoy and play with this product as intended and advertised. There isn't wool being pulled over a gullible consumer's eyes under the guise of being healthy. How KSI does not see the difference is just a whole nother level of coping. He was talking about food, not merchandise and toys. And I'm like, okay, sure. Let's keep moving the goalposts. But okay, did I reply to this? He was sponsored, then promoted, and made a whole video on Munch Pack, a monthly sub box full of food and candy to his Minecraft audience full of kids. If you just type in Dan TDM sweets, there's countless of videos of him eating sweets, promoting sweets to his audience, but cool. Now what? At this point, uh, his fans imploded. <laughs> Self-combustion occurred <laughs> on Twitter. <laughs> God, this dude is damn near jerking himself off laughing at his every word. Like, dude, Dan did this shit nine years ago. And there is just a massive difference between Lunchly and trying out a bunch of random candy from other countries for a YouTube series. And instead of actually addressing some of the more legitimate criticism on Twitter, KSI just turns to addressing some blatantly racist troll and tries to present it like that's every single person calling him out for this nonsense. And uh, they just didn't know how to react. Uh, some just decided just to be racist. <laughs> when the 
Someone like KSI does nothing in life and still gets paid for it in something other than welfare or food stamps. It's noteworthy. It's like how monkeys in the jungle have started to understand the concept of tools. Brother is just being racist. <laughs> His audience just didn't know what to do. They couldn't fathom the idea that their beloved Dan was also exactly what he claimed that we were. <laughs> Safe to say he's a hypocrite. <laughs> he also tries to act like because no one speaks out against all these other food products for kids that they shouldn't call out Lunchly. Like, dude, you were the head of various companies that peddle shit onto your kid fans who likely have a parasocial relationship with you, Logan, and Mr. Beast. I think that's another reason that people are taking more of an issue with Lunchly is because there's a deeper connection level from the consumer base of the product. Where was the same energy when Ryan Trahan really sweet? Where was the same energy when FaZe Rog really sweet? Because all of those things were advertised as candy, which people off the rip know is bad for you. It's the same reason that Mr. Beast faced little to no criticism over his chocolate when it came out. Lunchly, on the other hand, is advertised as a healthy lunch alternative. Like, it's not very hard to understand. Because people just hate us. <laughs> people just hate us. People hate Logan Paul, okay? They hate Mr. Beast. But as soon <laughs> as uh, I have a company with Jimmy and Logan Paul, SHUT OUT! You are <laughs> wow, I wonder why they dislike these guys. Can anyone help me out here? I mean, most people learn pretty early on that you are the company that you keep. And if you keep getting yourself into business with bad people, eventually you're either going to become a bad person yourself or get caught up in some bad shit that someone else is doing. I'm literally just making a company where I make a product that is better than the competition. No, you blatantly ripped it off. That's also why this product has no merit because it's so shamefully lazy. Mr. Beast and these clowns are acting like they're doing something good in the making of this. When in reality, it's really just adding to a heaping pile of shit. Now, as far as his response to that drama goes, that's pretty much it. Just him crying about Dan, his apparent fake fans who didn't dick ride this product, and faking laughter. But KSI did take time to respond to this clip that has been going viral, where he was apparently thinking about shilling NFTs to his audience. NFTs! NFTs! Oh my goodness, yeah. this was uh, KSI in his KSI crypto era. I mean, I'm still into crypto, okay? NFTs, obviously, not so much, because we've realized that hindsight is 2020, and that NFTs were just not as good as they were as they were claimed to be so nft non-fungible tokens i got all of that you know even with nfts i love the art man it's just amazing like it's cool to have physical art but to also have it on the blockchain huge post that you've got an nft and everyone just goes oh let me just take a screenshot it's mine now but that's just not the case i'm making millions from nfts because i know what i'm doing but like i said hindsight makes such a difference <laughs> If Ethereum were well, zero right now, everyone would have been like, ah, oh, you know, you guys promoted Ethereum, scammers. But obviously back then, no one knew. It's just this whole typical mindset with crypto. If things go down, it's a scam. If things go up, it's fine. But what about stocks? There's several stocks that go down. Does that mean they're scams? <laughs> Comparing Ethereum and the regulated stock market, to NFT projects that in some cases were developed and sold in less than 48 hours is hilarious. I mean, don't get me wrong, the people who jumped on the NFT train were idiots, but man, it's pretty telling how badly KSI seemed to want to jump on board. NFT projects, especially back then, were like, launch the NFT project, make $20 million that day. Yeah. What happens afterwards, everyone should make money, but if they don't, who cares, you made 20 mil. And we had this big, big, like, deck and like JJ thought it was the best idea. And then the other guys were like unsure. And I was like, I will not let this happen. So I had to like do a detailed breakdown of every reason why I thought it was a bad idea. I do not ever want to make millions of dollars at the expense, direct expense of fans getting nothing for it. Now that was pretty much the gist of KSI's response to this lunchly drama, but we did actually have Logan Paul take to YouTube to make his own video about the situation, meaning the one Dan TDM tweet has now resulted in three Twitter responses and two full-length YouTube videos, but I swear these guys are not mad about the situation. They're not insecure about their product. 
and they can totally handle constructive criticism in an appropriate manner. Context, imagine being a mother who's angry that we made this. Crackers, bro? You mad because we made crackers? This is what you're mad about? Bruh. It's a turkey, real cheese, and cracker stack. And by the way, it's great. I mean, yes, we made nachos as well with queso, but I think if you're getting mad about nachos, that's a that's a you problem. Oh, and the pizza. It's literally called the pizza. But same thing, like, you're mad about pizza? Like, 500,000 favorites because we made pizza, crackers, and nachos? Now, this seems to be a running theme throughout the course of this response from Logan, where he tries to paint anyone who's critical about his product as a blindly angry hater who doesn't know what they're talking about and will never accomplish anything in life. That's that's it! People just hate us! And I've come to realize now in my adult life that hate really is just a feeling of one's own inadequacy. You're dissatisfied with your life, you're unhappy, you're angry because your wife left you, or you, you suck. These are people who sit online all day, they don't go outside, they don't smell the grass. Sit at the computer all day, they'll come up with something that fits their narrative, or might make your tweet look bad so other people can ratio you, and oh my god! These people will go through life, and that'll be their greatest accomplishment, and if I can help with that, I'm so happy to. Now I don't think that people are actually that like, up in arms about this situation. I really think it's just like this crowd of people calling out three scumbags for continuing their scumbag behavior. But as long as he paints it as this like blind hate situation of people just being mad because he's successful, well maybe some of his fans will start to share that opinion as well and kind of disregard this legitimate criticism. This confuses me. I remember a time when like success and dreams used to be celebrated and now it's like, and this was my response to Dan TDM, we've spent our whole lives creating content and now we want to build businesses. Seems like a natural arc for any young ambitious adult and without even trying the meal, just seeing a headline, it is met with hate, resistance, Disgust. Yes, because you guys are so blatantly ripping off Lunchables. There's been many times in the past where I've given Logan Paul and KSI a ton of credit for helping develop Prime. Like the marketing strategy behind Prime when it comes to KSI and Logan, many times I have said is genius. Like that was the perfect market for them to jump into given how big their reach is and how many kid fans that they have. But to me, Lunchly just looks lazy. I mean, these guys are using Lunchables product, basically dogging on it, to try and now peddle this shit, which I find is a very lazy way to market something like, oh, we're better than this other guy. Now, the rest of this video is kind of just Logan crying about the community notes on Twitter and pretty much claiming that anyone who has something negative to say about his product is lying. But yeah, community notes, lies. I had a sports MD doctor on one of my tweets. Lie. Why lie for? But I'm like, bro, it's not sodium. It's the 400 milligrams of electrolytes that we mentioned in the drink. And I had to correct him. I was like, bro, you're a sports medicine doctor. You, how how, how you can't read? Yeah, but more electrolytes doesn't just inherently mean that something is more healthy. I mean, these kids are sitting in a desk all day, hopefully learning or scoring through TikTok, whatever the f kids do at school these days. It's not like they're losing all this sweat. It's not like they're out there exercising like crazy. So why do they need to sit down in the lunchroom and have all these electrolytes going through their body? I can't believe it. It's like there are so many forces working against us to make sure we don't win, which is why we're going to work that much harder to make sure we do win. It's kind of like when the team that spends all the money and buys all the superstars and the respected sport that you like now tries to start painting themselves as the underdog. Like we're not buying it. Even my guy, Dr. Mike, had to cook the Lunchly brand one time. But Lunchly is healthier. I guess one can say yes, but honestly, probably more so as a marketing tactic. The reason why? Well, let's look at the recently passed nutrition standards set forth by the USDA for school lunches and see how Lunchly compares. So these are the regulations for the shitty lunch that they're selling at all these different public schools. You know, that nasty cardboard pizza, that disgusting chicken sandwich, that questionable burger apparently all has better nutrition than Lunchly. Less than 10% of calories should come from saturated fat. Lunchly turkey, 23% of calories come from saturated fat. Bad. Less than 10% of calories should come from added sugars. Lunchly turkey, 10.4 comes from added Bad. sugars. Bad, failure. This is where things get really interesting and for some reason no one has pointed this out. You see, Ooh. USDA caloric guidelines say that a lunch meal for kids K through eight should contain around 625 calories. Kids need energy to function and calories give them that energy. Lunchly turkey contains only 230 calories, which would mean a kid would need to eat about 2.7 portions to consume enough calories. Meaning they would be eating a whole lot of processed fat. Listen, I know a lot of people like to act like calories are like the end all be all, but especially when it comes to kids, it's really not. 
But don't worry guys, it has all those electrolytes, so you can rest assured this is a very healthy product. Lunchly turkey contains only 230 calories, which would mean a kid would need to eat about 2.7 portions to consume enough calories. And if they did that, they'd get nearly 1300 milligrams of sodium which is also significantly over the USDA standards. So they'd be either under eating calories or overeating sodium. Finally, the grain guidelines state that 80% of lunch meals must be whole grain and lunchly turkey does not list any whole grain ingredient. Yeah, so basically it's bad for you. Like I told you guys last video, food in general, especially when it comes to America, is completely f***ed up. And the way they allow these companies to package their products and promote them like, oh, it's healthy because it has protein. It's healthy because it's low calorie. It's healthy because it's low fat. When in reality, you're still digesting a bunch of nonsense that's likely going to give you a terminal illness later in your life. It's just crazy. Like the fact that they allow that to happen and the fact that so many foods here in America are banned in all these other countries should just tell you everything you need to know about how much they truly care about the consumers and the people who live here. Like I said, at the end of the day, I don't think that people are necessarily that upset but they're really just calling out three snake oil salesmen for peddling more bullshit onto the general public. Like, to me, it's just as simple as that. But I want to know what you guys think about this whole situation down below. As always, I also want to thank you guys for watching today's video, dropping a like, and subscribing. I do hope if you're eating something out there, it's better than Lunchly. But either way, it's been your boy, the Tan Superman, and some other nasty products out here need to be covered. So I'm out. Peace!